if a section, row, column, element or item has selected a content source with multiple items, it will be multiplied and rendered as many times as available in the content source. For example, here I have an empty grid element. Go to the Advanced tab of the item and let's select Articles as the content source. In the Content tab, let's map the article title, the publish date, intro text, intro image, and the link. And as you can see, grid items multiply and render as many times as available in the content source. In this case, 9 times. If you have selected a content source which has multiple items, there are two options available to define which items are rendered. You can set the starting point and limit the number of items. The combination of the start and quantity options allows you to split content source items into different visual layout parts. For example, you can show first articles more prominently than the rest of the articles. Let's add a grid element and show the first two articles in a two-column grid. Let's change the columns to two columns. Go to the Advanced tab of the items and let's select Articles as the content source. Since we want to start with the first item, let's leave the Start option at 1 and now change the Quantity option to two articles. In the Content tab again, let's map the title of our article, Publish Date, Intro Text, Intro Image and the link. Now our first two articles are shown in a two-column grid. Now let's go to the other grid element. Here in the Advanced tab of the item, Let's change the Start option to the third article. Mind that when templating an index or a category page, as in our case, the Quantity option should only be used when splitting content sources. This is because the number of articles on those pages is already defined in Joomla. While multiple item elements have a large variety of settings to achieve different layouts, for more advanced layouts, you may need more flexibility. In Utheme Pro, you can design a repeated layout part with the page builder by multiplying a section, row or column. For example, I have prepared a layout which I saved in the layout library. Here I have a section with a row which has three columns. To multiply this section, go to the Advanced tab of the section and select a multiple item source. Let's select Articles. This source will be used as a parent source by the elements within the section. So let's go to the Advanced tab of the text element, select Parent as the source, and in the Content tab, let's map the Publish date. Now for the Panel element, let's also select Parent as the source. And in the Content tab, let's map the article title, the subtitle, intro text, and link. Finally, let's go to the Image element, go to the Advanced tab, select Parent as the source, and in the Content tab, let's map the intro image. And now we have created a repeated section layout with the page builder. Sections, rows, columns or elements which load a multiple item source, show a dynamic content and status icon and are highlighted green in the layout. Keep in mind that when multiplying sections, sections have the same background which is why you need to remove the top or bottom padding to prevent double padding. Of course, you can also multiply a row or a column. If you want to multiply a group of rows but not the whole section, 
use the sub layout element. Let's add a new sub layout element. Here again, I have prepared a layout in the layout library. And now, simply set a multiple item source on the sub layout element and use it as a parent source within the sub layout. If you want to show or hide any element or the whole row depending on the index of the items, you can use dynamic conditions. Here I also have a row with a divider, which is now shown after each article. Let's hide this row for the last item. Go to the Advanced tab of the row, set the content source to Parent, and now under Dynamic Condition, select Last Item, and the condition is empty. And now the divider will only be shown if the row is not the last item, so only between the items. Finally, if you multiply a column, the other columns defined by the row layout are still present. That's why for a layout with just one repeating column, as in my case right now, the row layout has to be set to whole. You can then set the width for the multiplied column by editing the layout. This will define the number of columns after which they wrap into the next line. But of course, in advanced cases, different columns can be multiplied using a row layout with more columns.